Boy, this new pope sure is awesome. He's a reformer. He's a radical. He's a beacon of light illuminating the dimmest hour of Catholic decline. He's beloved by all, Catholic and otherwise. He's approachable. He's off the cuff. He's lovable. He's the antithesis to Pope Palpatine II. He is a game changer. Except for, you know, all the places that matter. Now, the major media outlets probably suffering from a bit of Protestant guilt after spending two decades covering stories about Catholics butt-raping children, so I guess I understand why they've been so quick to cram into the papal fellatio waiting room. But in their eagerness to finally have something good to say about the Vatican, I think they've forgotten that balanced does not equal honest. So let me make something clear about Pope Franks, but no Franks. He has not done a fucking thing. Despite the publicity juggernaut to the contrary, carrying your own bags and posing for an occasional photo op in a jalopy does not count as reform. Living in a palatial guest home instead of a palatial palace does not count as reform. Washing feet and ad-libbing shit about atheists going to heaven doesn't count as reform. To reform something, you have to actually do something. Let's face it, during the reign of Pope Benedict, we had some pretty legitimate complaints about the papacy, and none of them were, Man, that old fucker won't even carry his own luggage. So where does Pope, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn, stand on the big issues? Well, he's against condoms. He fully endorses the genocidal opposition to contraception that exacerbates the AIDS epidemic in Africa. It would take nothing but waving his magic Pope wand to halt all these detrimental policies, and yet he's done nothing. He's against ordaining women. Not only has he made no moves on that, but he's also left a long line of politically motivated misogyny behind him on his way to the Vatican, not to mention a few allegations of war crimes, but that's a different story. He's also staunchly homophobic. He actually described the move in Argentina to legalize gay marriage as, quote, a war against God. He shows no signs whatsoever that he's going to move the Vatican into the 21st century with regard to gays. He's also a staunch supporter of celibacy for priests, despite the fact that it isn't biblical, it actually directly contradicts the biblical prescription for priests in their sex lives, and he could give a damn less if it's harmful psychologically. Come meet the new pope, same as the old pope. In all the ways that matter, he hasn't changed anything, and yet every day I hop onto a religion news site and I read about all these great symbolic reforms he's making. Well, symbolic actions are great unless they're coming from somebody who has the authority to make real change and isn't. But the media is so desperate to paint him as a reformer that I've seen him extolled for coming out, quote, strongly against the financial misdealings of the Vatican Bank. Like there was some other pope who was all about publicly endorsing laundering money for the mafia? Look, maybe the media is right and I'm wrong. Maybe Pope Frankie Doodle Dandy really is planning on reforming the Vatican from the ground up. But he hasn't started yet. And when you take over as the head of the most corrupt institution on the planet, you don't get any extra credit for dressing less flamboyantly than the last guy.